pleasant morning to respected CEO sir, principal, honorable chief guest teachers and my dear friends. I, Prayaga, would like to welcome you all to this auspicious event. It gives me immense pleasure by welcoming you all to the Science Week. Firstly, I would like to thank everyone who has contributed in organizing this event. Science is one of the most important subject to one. It is considered as a blessing to us. Science helps us in discovering new things, in revealing the reality, in helping us find a new truth. Today, we are going to exhibit the new and innovative creation we students have prepared as models, charts and many more. But before that, let me introduce you all, our Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Shashi Stephen, who worked as a Senior Laboratory Engineer in the Department of Chemistry at Khalifa University, Abu Dhabi, UAE. He worked at the School of Medicine, Kuwait University from 1987 to 1990 as a research assistant and continued his career at the College of Medicine, UAE University from 1991 to 2002. He also has a PhD in chemistry from the University of Bolton. He contributes to various research programs and also has nearly 50 pre-reviewed publications and has supervised several students' projects using his instrumentation skills in ICPMS, GCMS and NMR and HPLC. So I welcome Dr. Shashi Stephen for his few words and to inaugurate the Science Week. Thank you. Respected principal, teachers, staff and uh, students of TRIS. The abbreviated name TRIS itself is very interesting. Uh, even though I'm far, far away from you, I'm trying to be part of you. I'm with you in the next few minutes. First of all, I thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk to you from a remote place and uh, um, be part of your science festival or, or your science week. Thinking of science festivals or science week, definitely that's a great opportunity for the students to come with their innovative ideas, with their creative minds, producing something new and showing it to, the, to their uh, peers and to their teachers and to have a healthy competition among themselves. That's what I understand by your science week uh, idea. Definitely there might be some differences but this is what is happening in schools and universities. It gives a, a momentum to their thinking process. Definitely, I'm sure you have so many projects on display in your school at this moment. Um, science, why science is important? Um, um, when, you, when you are in a school or a university, you learn different subjects. All subjects are important. All subjects are equally important. But Having said that, being a scientist myself, I'm a little bit biased towards science subjects. Science is part of our everyday life. Science gives us a lot of uh, uh, facilities. Right now, I'm, I'm sitting nearly 2,500 kilometers away from you, but I'm talking to you as if I'm looking at your face and talking to you. That's the product of science. Science and technology gives us those facilities to interact even from very large geographical distances. Again, look at the pandemic we are all facing now. Um, the world is gripped by a tiny virus. The, the virus has wreaked a lot of havoc. Uh, we are all in trouble. The world is in trouble. We have looked at the scientists and the doctors. We have asked we have requested them to bring forth something to safeguard us from the virus attack and very, very quickly they came up with a vaccine in the space of one and a half to two years. Normally a vaccine would take something like five to ten years to be available. But they have worked very, very hard. They were trying to beat the time and they have come up with a solution. So science definitely has an advantage among all your subjects you study. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I would advise you to go after your passions. No, nobody can force you to study this or that. Nobody can tell you that uh, 
you ha you need to be an engineer, you need to be a scientist, or you need to be a doctor. Go after your passions. You now, if you are if you if you want to be an accountant, if you want to be a creative artist, that's all fine. We parents or your teachers can only advise you. The final decision should come from you. Coming back to Science Week, uh, I hope there are a lot of projects on display. It's an opportunity for you to compete against each other in a healthy manner and uh, use your thinking process to, to, to produce something new, bring some new ideas or to make a simple discovery. All the very best with your Science Week. Congratulations and thank you again for uh, allowing me to be part of this. With your permission, I declare this Science Week open. Thank you very much. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those who have worked really hard for the Science Week celebrations to happen. I, Prayaga, on behalf of the Rajas International School and the entire fraternity of the institution, first of all would like to extend my most sincere thanks to the Almighty God for making today's event a resounding success. With His blessings and grace, we are able to make this event what it was. On behalf of my school, I extend a really hearty word of thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Shashi Stephen, who spared time from his busiest schedule to grace this occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear you and your thoughts, and this will surely encourage us in our future events. Your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path. My gratitude to all the speakers for the gracing occasion and sharing their opinion today. Last but not the least, a big thank you to each one of you who made this Science Week a great celebration and a memorable day. Thank you all and have a beautiful day ahead. Hello everyone, I'm Irene Marie Nook from A11. So now, here it comes, the Science Week 2021 Project Softress. A very warm welcome to all. I'm Shiva from Grade 8 and I'm going to explain what artificial intelligence or AI is. What is the term AI exactly? Artificial intelligence is a wide-ranging branch of computer science concerned with building smart machines capable of performing tasks that typically require human intelligence. The term artificial intelligence was coined decades ago in the year 1946 by John McCarthy. So he defined it as, as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. AI is used in different fields, such as healthcare, robotics, marketing, business, and also in our daily lives. There are different types of AI. So, the first type of AI is Artificial nar Narrow Intelligence, that's A and I, and Artificial General Intelligence and Artificial Super Intelligence. So these are the three types of AI. The first type of AI is Artificial Narrow Intelligence. So it is a machine that has a capacity to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. So it's a form of feeble AI that involves applying only at a precise task. So it can be a single task like scanning or producing. For example, it can be seen in the modern e-vehicles that scans the environment and shows the outline of it. The second type of artificial intelligence is artificial general intelligence. It's also known as a strong AI. So the ultimate goal of artificial intelligence is to replicate the broad range of human cognitive abilities. So this AI has an enhanced ability to perform any knowledgeable tasks. The last or the third type of AI is artificial super intelligence. So it is a super intelligence that is hypothetical agent that possesses intelligence for surpassing that 
of the brightest and most gifted human minds. So it is an era where the computers will exceed human and intellect of humans. AI and the future. The world is now focusing on autonomous systems. If AI was independent, they would take over the world and there would be shortcomings. We would never be able to notice the seeping of AI into our lives. Thank you. I'm Prana from 7B. Today I'm going to show you a small model on topology. A topology advances structure of matter where all your components are interconnected. Now let's look at the topology of AI. The topology of AI is Tree topology, ring topology, star topology, mesh topology, and best topology. Tree topology. A tree topology is a network configuration where all the computers are arranged in a hierarchical fashion. A ring topology is a network configuration where all the computers are arranged in a circular data path. Then a star topology is a network configuration where all the computers are interconnected to one central hub or switch in a star formation. A mesh topology is a network configuration where all the computers are interconnected to one another. And finally, bus topology is a network configuration where all the nodes are connected, directly connected to one common half duplex link called a bus. A host on a bus topology is called a station. Thank you and have a nice day. Hello everyone. I'm Irene Mariam Luke from A Level, listening here a song describing about lab rules. Hope you will like it. Working in the lab and I'm thinking about safety. The goggles down. A good song, open to the side of here, are you going crazy? Things could go wrong, things could go wrong. My gloves, they me safe for all chemicals, the chemicals. My love, tie it back here and the materials, the materials. Check your can No food a day And it's in the bus there in the morning And if all of this You will make it together I got a saga I got a saga Long hair tie back in the sun I got a saga Now go tell you to go different one this is name, you should have been taken away too. Don't miss a day until the label check again. No food a day, I'm just one there in the morning. And follow this, you will make it together. Cause I got a saga. I got a saga. So, the materials used for this experiment are a piece of mirror and a candle. First, let's consider the size of the object and the image formed. It is pretty evident from the following images that the size of the object is equal to the size of the image formed and vice versa. Thus, we can say that size of images is equal to the size of the object for images formed in mirror, plane mirror. Then, 
then we can see that the image formed is upright. In other words, they are not upside down, thus they are erect. We observe the reflection shown by this arrow. You can see that the reflection in the object is towards the left, but the reflection in the of image is towards the right. Thus, we can say that image formed by a plane mirror is laterally inverted. Finally, the image formed by a plane mirror is virtual. Thank you. Hi, my name is Aksa Ashish and today I am going to be doing a project about diffusion. Before we get started, if you guys don't know what diffusion is, it is basically the movement of a substance from from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. As you can see, I have two glasses and the first glass I have normal water and in the second glass and in the second glass I have oil. What I'm about to do is I'm actually going to be adding a drop of red food coloring into the normal water. And I'm also going to be adding a drop of yellow food coloring into the oil. As you can see, in glass 1, the food coloring is starting to spread and starting to diffuse around the water. But in glass 2, where oil contains, it is not moving around. It is not spreading around. And this is because the liquid food coloring is water-based, which is why it doesn't mix with oil when you stir it. Instead, the food coloring breaks into small droplets, small droplets which become temporarily suspended or floating within the oil. Oil is made up of different chemical bonds than water is, which is why the two don't mix up. Oil is less dense than water, so it floats on top. The food coloring only dissolves in water since it is water based. And that is all for my project. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Today I'll be trying to explore a reaction between acid and base. The materials which we require for this reaction are a raw egg which acts as the base in this reaction and vinegar which acts as the acid in this reaction. Vinegar is basically an acetic acid and it's not that strong. Let's get started. First, let's take the egg and place it carefully into the glass. Place it carefully so that the uh, egg doesn't crack. Now let's take the vinegar and pour the vinegar into the glass. Make sure you pour vinegar until the egg is submerged in vinegar. Before we move on to what has happened to the egg, let's check out the interesting facts behind this reaction. As I said earlier, the acid which we use in this reaction is vinegar, which is acetic acid. And the base which we use in this reaction is eggshell, which is calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is naturally a stone. We all know that acid plus base gives us a type of salt plus gas plus water. Eggshell plus vinegar gives us a type of salt plus gas plus water. Now let's check out what this salt and what this gas is. Calcium carbonate which is the eggshell plus acetic acid which is vinegar gives us calcium ethanoate plus water plus carbon dioxide. Now let's check out the chemical formula of this reaction. The chemical formula of this reaction is CaCO3 plus 2CH2OCOOH which gives us CaCH3COO2 plus CO2 plus H2O.
Hello everyone, we are back after 24 hours to check on what has happened to our egg. You have seen before what our egg looked like when we had put it into the vinegar. Now let's see what has happened to the egg after we have put it for 24 hours in vinegar. As you can see, salts have formed under the glass which is known as calcium ethanoate. These are the salts as you can see over here. Now let's check out the texture of our egg. How does the egg's texture look like? The egg has a very slimy texture. As you can see while I squashed it, um, it became squashed and it's having a slimy texture. I hope my trial helped you all to understand the reaction. Thank you everyone. My name is Samuel Titus from grade 9. My science experiment was generating electricity from solar. Before we begin, I would like to give you an overview of my project. This is an experiment to show how energy of the sun can be converted into a useful electrical energy which we can use in our homes. Before I explain you the details of the project, I would like to explain how solar panels produce electricity. Similar to cells in a battery. The battery. Solar panels, which is here, is designed to ge generate electricity. The difference is battery produce electricity from chemicals and solar panels uh, cells generate electricity by capturing sunlight. Looks interesting, right? So how does it work? Sunlight is composed of photons or particles of radiant solar energy. A solar cell is made up of two layers of silicon that are treated to let electricity flow through them when exposed to sunlight. One layer is positively charged, other is negatively charged. As photons enter the layers, they give up energy to the atoms in the silicon in the form of electrons. When photons hit the layers of silicon, electrons pass through the junction between the positive and negative layers, generating electric current. This is my project. As you see here, to do this experiment, I brought a solar panel from the market, which has an output of 5 watts, which will allow me to demonstrate how sun and energy is converted into electrical energy. Here you see my board with the circle. Here we go. This board is designed for a 5 volt DC, which is put into a light and a fan circuit controlled by a switch. This is a series circuit that I have created. I use the positive red cable as you see from the solar panel and connected to the switch that you see here. From the switch I have created a series circuit that reason to build series circuit is because the solar panel gives an output of 5 volts when it is exposed to sunlight. This volt is distributed in the series circuit to the light you see here with the 2.5 volts and the fan with the DC motor which is 2.5 volts. In order to complete this uh, the series circuit, I have taken the negative black cable and connected in a series like this. So our circuit is ready now and it will work as we put the panels in the sunlight. I will take this to my house roof now and show you how it is working and come back to you on this video again talk to you about my project conclusion now I'm on the rooftop I'm going to switch on the power so hope you liked it basically my presentation was a concept of how today the whole world is going on solar imagine having these types of solar and I say 50 to 100 of them installed on the empty roof spaces of your houses which will power your entire house saving energy and money and remember that it is clean green energy. Thank you. Good morning. I am Ari Nair and for my project for the science week is to investigate the effect of egg inside vinegar. So what I'm about to be doing now is I have a glass here as well as a bottle of vinegar. We are just going to fill this glass with vinegar and we are going to add this egg in it.
so basically what we are trying to find is what will happen when the egg is pour when the egg is placed inside the vinegar so i'm about to add the vinegar now yeah almost the full glass of vinegar and i'm slowly going to place the egg make sure it doesn't crack yes the egg is now inside can see a reaction is going on inside a lot of bubbles are forming it's just been almost one minute since the egg has been put inside the vinegar and as you can see a lot of bubbles have has been forming so we just need to wait 24 hours to um, see uh, results Now for the vinegar to take complete effect on the egg, this may vary due to the um, egg difference. Um, it may be from 24 hours to one week, so it may take from one day to a full one week. But then after the, after the egg has been placed, maybe after three or four days, the egg will mostly be squishy as well as bouncy. This will be the positive effect when egg is placed in vinegar. Now you might be wondering why are we doing such an activity like this putting an egg in vinegar and then checking after quite some time to see if it stays the same or uh, if it has different property. But as we have seen it has different properties after um, 24 to 72 hours we can see that the egg has become squishy and bouncy now this kind of reaction is when that is because the eggs shell which contains calcium carbonate which is basic as well as we have put it in vinegar which is an acetic acid so when these both uh, react together they release carbon dioxide which we can see is the uh, which is released as bubbles now I will tell you about the linking between this activity as well as tooth decay, the similar linking between these two. So there are uh, types of bacteria which are present in our mouth and they are most likely to stick on to the hard surfaces of our teeth. So when we consume sugary drinks or foods such as sweets, chocolates or sugary items etc. So these foods uh, tend to get stuck in our teeth and thereby bacteria will consume it and thereby release acids which dissolve the enamel completely resulting in a cavity the tooth if the cavity is uh, too big the tooth may have to be removed present here. Today I will be showing you an experiment regarding refraction. Refraction is nothing else but simply the bending of light when it moves from a rarer medium to a denser medium. Okay so now I will show you an experiment that shows bending of light. So here I have a glass of water and I will be putting a pen into the water. So as you can see when I put the pen into the water the pen appears slightly to be broken. That is simply because of bending of light. So 
basically when light moves from a rarer medium to a denser medium and in this case the air is the rarer medium and the water is the denser medium the light it bends towards the normal and that is why the pen appears to be broken hello everyone my name is manas i'm from grade 8 the rajas international school so today i'm going to present to you the rainbow density experiment so what's density density so density is how much mass per unit volume so what's a mass mass is how much weight how much weight the object has and volume is how much or uh, how much space the volume the object takes place so i have different liquid here this is honey well washing liquid no this is liquid soap and water oil so i have added like different color to these because honey has red Added food color, red food coloring, food coloring to honey, blue food coloring to liquid soap, green food coloring to water, and oil doesn't really mix with any color, so yeah. The reason I added these color, like I added colors to these liquid are because some of these liquid have the same color, so I want to. This is a rainbow experiment. It needs to be colorful. So yeah, honey and that. So first. We're gonna pure the honey because we know that that's the densest. Yeah, that's red. Okay. Now the liquid soap. Yeah, you can see that it doesn't really mix with the honey. So this is the honey and this is the liquid soap. It doesn't really mix together. Now the water, which is green. That's leaking. You can't really see it, but the water definitely mixes with This is green, blue. Definitely mixes with it. Okay. And now the oil. So honey, red, look it so blue, and then water green, and then oil. Get a little bit of green there because of the reflection. So yeah, so these liquid is separate from each other because of the density. We have honey, which is the densest. Uh, look it so, which is a little denser than that, and water, which is least lesser than least dense than liquid soap and oil which is the, the least densest so yeah thanks for watching bye hello everyone today i'll be conducting an experiment by using this the hand sanitizer now this has been a very common thing ever since india faced its many coronavirus waves so today I will be experimenting on this. Now the main focus of the experiment is to see whether this burns and if it does what's the reaction. Now onwards to the composition of the hand sanitizer. So most hand sanitizers have uh, many ingredients but the most important one is ethyl alcohol or known as ethanol. Now most hand sanitizers will have 70 to 80 percent ethyl alcohol and alcohol itself burns it reacts with oxygen 
Now we're gonna see whether alcohol in this can actually burn. So, first we're gonna go for the precautions. Please, if you don't have any experience in handling matchsticks or lighters, I advise you use adult supervision while doing the experiment because if you don't, you will burn your hands or you will burn something else on accident. So please use adult supervision. Now let's go on to the experiment and the apparatus we're going to use for this experiment. So first, we need a metallic plate or a steel plate or a bowl because when we're using it on a wooden table the wood will burn so I advise using a steel or metallic plate now we're gonna put it right here let me just adjust the camera so that you can actually see what's happening all right so the next thing is we're gonna have matchsticks and then first we're gonna apply it all not all around the plate just in this area this area so it'll be safe well you don't have to necessarily put uh, the correct amount of alcohol you can put as much as you want I'm suggesting going for a small amount considering that it'll take a while for it to burn and then next we're going to light it be careful, okay? Hold on. Now, as you can see, it's burning right away. And, okay, so it's burning right now, as you can see, right here, it's burning now. Now, what happens is, is that when when the alcohol reacts to the fire in the matchstick, it reacts with oxygen. So with the oxygen and heat, it forms, uh, it forms carbon dioxide and water. Now, like it seems like as if it's actually pretty hot, but it's, but, but actually if you touch it, it's a little, It'll take a while for it to cool down, but it's actually really cool. It's actually cold. So basically because the formation of water, so that is why you are able to feel its cold feeling, even though it finished burning. So the conclusion is that hand sanitizers contain alcohol and that alcohol reacts with oxygen and heat to form carbon dioxide and water so that is the conclusion of this experiment and please do not try this at home unless you have experience in holding matchsticks and using lighters and for less risk don't use it on a wooden table that is why I have to blow it out as early as possible so thank you and have a nice day from A level presenting here about the first step of our group web project. Our team already knows that there are millions of people who simply love the taste of coffee. This taste is different for every coffee drinker because of the vast variety of coffee flavors, roast and varieties available on the market. So an online coffee business allows many to work from home. Especially coffee is one of the world's most popular beverages that has overcome remarkable hurdles to carry on businesses during the pandemic. Moreover, we already know that having an online presence will be super important for the business and informative content that relates to coffee brewing methods, drink recipes and a variety of types of snacks and desserts attracts website visitors. Almost everyone loves coffee. If you would like to try coffee in a unique way, then we team Barista are good at that. As a professional team, we show our love for coffee through artistry. A few decades ago, people used to spend long time to order their food and even the preparation takes time. But now, 
During the pandemic due to COVID-19, we started to take orders from our website to avoid crowds and be environment friendly to the society. So for that, we have started free home delivery services. Our shop provides the beverages to its customers with the use of high quality ingredients and following the preparation procedure to the latter. According to our menu list, we contain different types of coffee drinks such as espresso, americano, cappuccino, etc. and also hot drinks such as hot chocolate, white chocolate, green tea and a traditional ethnic Indian chai. For that, we also serve an indoor western fusion style of snacks and dessert such as macarons, Indian sweets, cupcakes, etc. are served to our customers. I'm Lina from A level. Let me take you through my work. Firstly, I'm glad that I got an opportunity to work on this portion of the project as I learned many new things throughout the process from planning a website to publishing it. I used Wix application to create website as it provided built-in features, colorful templates and so forth, which made my task easier and more creative. In addition, it also has free tutorial videos on how to operate different segments of the application. Me and my team planned on the menu, prices and images to be displayed on the website. To highlight our work, images and information shown on the website are taken from Google. We would like to thank our CEO, principal and teachers for giving us this opportunity to explore new ideas and showcase our capability through our work. I am Emil from grade 10. Convex mirror. A convex mirror or diverging mirror is a curved mirror in which the reflective surface bulk toward the light source. Convex mirror reflect the light outward, therefore they are not used to focus light. Now, how does convex mirror work? The image you see on the convex mirror is virtual image. This is because the light bouncing off never converge. Is this distorted image that gives you a wider field of view than a normal mirror is capable to allowing you to see, for example, the traffic around the corner.